SA Manchester. Um, I worked for many years as a very senior bureaucrat in uh, the NHS and local government in, in Manchester. Um, I retired at the end of March, so now I'm, I'm free to misbehave. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also had an academic career and um, I kind of sort of an amateur at all sorts of things. Um, one of which is, I suppose, I'm here as an amateur economist. Um, but perhaps more um, critically, as, a, as an activist and as part of a local campaign um, to begin um, thinking through uh, and helping Manchester, the various sectors of Manchester, begin to address how we move towards a steady state Manchester, a steady state society, and <coughs> a steady state economy. So, we've set ourselves uh, yeah, it's a, 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 an easy task. We should get this one done by the end of the year, shouldn't we? <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, economic growth in, 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 in general terms before focusing on the work that we're doing in Manchester. I've picked this quote from, from David Harvey uh, from his book The Enigma of Capital where he points out that 3% growth forever is running into serious constraints. There are environmental constraints, market constraints, profitability constraints, spatial constraints. We've heard already about the environmental constraints and we've heard, uh, particularly from Dan, about some of the social constraints that uh, basically economic growth doesn't deliver for people's well-being. But there are other problems. It's the, the model, from what we can tell, um, is possibly broken. We don't know what we're doing this, but uh, maybe escape the mod. So thanks. So a couple of graphs on um, growth in, in, in GDP. Um, the, the first one. Uh, compares recovery from recessions. And you'll see that the, uh, the line which at the end of the, the timeline is the lowest. Uh, so 54 months uh, from the start of the re recession, uh, that lower line is the current recession that we're in now. So I suppose we ask the question, is something different now? Uh, is it proving even more difficult to come out of the recession within the dominant so even in its own terms, a, uh, it looks like we're into a very serious situation. So maybe economic growth is, is no longer actually possible in the same way. There are a number of reasons for that. Uh, the kind of internal constraints on the capitalist system that, that, that people like David Harvey have been discussing. Uh, the lower growth shows that in terms of the, the UK growth rate. And you can see uh, last week's news uh, announcement uh, last quarter where it did peak. But I think the consensus is very much that that's been a matter of um, short-term factors to do with, with the Olympics and people uh, not having holidays that they had in the previous quarter and so on. Um, but, um, you know, as, as, as Ed Balls kind of graphically points out, it's, uh, it's flatlining. Um, and it's well below the holy grail of, of 3%, which is uh, usually seen as, if you like, a healthy uh, level of economic growth um, under the, the dominant paradigm. I was, um, I've just come actually from the um, Corporate United uh, Congress um, in, in, in Manchester uh, today. I was in a workshop uh, run by uh, people from New Economics Foundation, uh, Transition Network, mm -hmm. and Centre for Local um, uh, Economic Strategies. And uh, Neil Kinron from, from Clems uh, made the point that we're in a perfect storm. Um, where a number of these, these elements, the, 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 the climate crisis, the economic crisis, and, and so on, the soil crisis, uh, are all coming together. It's a perfect storm. And as he said, we need a new paradigm. We need a new narrative. Um, in the terms of what we've been talking about, as in steady state Manchester, plan A is, the, um, is, is fiscal austerity. Plan B is a return to a better yesterday. Um, Keynes, either green Keynes or great Keynes. And we have had to see. <laughs> so, whatever does a steady state uh, mean at a city or regional level? And how can we take practical steps towards a steady state society and a steady state economy? 
Sadly, I'm not going to be able to answer that question in a short five minutes, or six and a half minute presentation. So all I'm going to be able to do is give you an idea of the, the areas that we were are focusing on in, in our work in, in uh, the City State Manchester. We received a flyer for the launch of our major report um, on the 20th of November. And we focused on, on, on these various areas, which you'll see map on very much to the, the things that Dan was talking about. So we use that with language, so uh, Dan talked about fair distribution, we talked about redistribution, we talked about sustainable scale, we talked about localization, we talked about measurement of progress, we talked about defining and measuring well-being and prosperity, and, and, and so on. But these are the areas that we, 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 we are looking at. Um, now, one of the, the number of if you like, standard objections to uh, the idea of a steady state economy, one of those is you can't have sustainability in one country, you can't have sustainability or steady state in one municipality or one region. And of course, the, that's a very sound argument in, in, in many ways because we are connected globally. So, how do we extricate ourselves from that? How do we move towards steady state without our local economy crashing even further? So it's a tricky question. But in a way, the answer is within the statement of the problem. The problem is that we are connected, over-connected uh, globally. Uh, you, know, you can buy a sandwich in Manchester that was made in Devon, for heaven's sake. You know, what makes sense in that? We export potatoes to, to Germany and we import potatoes from Germany. And so on. This can't go on. We have to um, isolate ourselves more. We have to relatively de link from the global economy and we have to start doing that. And in order for that to be possible, we've got to advocate, we've got to campaign to, to alter the national and the international context through lobbying and campaigning. Manchester's biggest ever campaign this needs to be. So, just to give a flavour, this breaks all the rules of PowerPoint, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 So I don't expect to read them all. Uh, it's more like a question sort of, yeah, feel, feel, feel the light. Um, this just gives an idea that we are looking, I mean, looking at a number of different areas. And these um, the different colours of, of the uh, practical proposals and recommendations, which we think are feasible at a local level. These map on to the, the areas that I, I, I mentioned last night, which are similar again to uh, the it looks like almost like the standard analysis of steady state economics in terms of where, where, what we need to be doing. Uh, so we've avoided, by and large, other than the idea of campaigning uh, nationally, uh, internationally, um, to change the context that we're in, we focus very much on those things that we can alter locally. Let me just pick up an example. Um, We've got a problem with the way in which money is created, whereby banks create money, they create uh, debt, and you know, we're in a, a, a crisis of, of debt. I mean, basically, the debt, the debt doesn't exist, but we are in that, that crisis. Um, and we need to move away from that. We can do that on a number of uh, different levels. Unite the Union, for example, is uh, looking very radically at establishing um, strong credit unions and working very much with credit unions to give um, people with very few uh, financial resources more access to, to cheap credit rather than sort of 3,000% uh, APR payday loans that they're, that they're stuck with. But we, we need to clean up our local investments. Our, our public sector have pension funds, for example, that invest in, in the, the capital system. We need to look at where we're investing. But also, what about a Manchester bond? What about giving a safe uh, savings vehicle for Manchester people? a Manchester Green Investment Bond. It could be part primed by selling 20% 20, 20 stake in the airport and channeling that into um, the, the Manchester Investment, uh, Green Investment Bond, which would then be used to do many other things in terms of um, establishing local food production, establishing local production, re-industrialising Manchester sustainably, so we're not dependent on industry in China and, um, and the, the Macadores in Mexico and, and so on. Um, so we begin, if you like, to, to de-link, to, uh, to relocalize our economy. Uh, and, and, and so that's the kind of vehicle that, that, that people are actually seriously talking about. And it's been using to our ears that um, we're not alone in this, uh, in, in talking about this. In, in uh, Guardian Profession yesterday, Sir Harold Bernstein, the Chief Executive of the City Council, was talking, not in terms of a reinvestment bond, uh, but certainly in terms of a, a, a Manchester investment bond. 
um, or managed investment fund. So I think there's, there seems to be some potential connections uh, going on here that we can maximise and work together. So that's where we're at. We're a local campaign. We're trying to influence both the public sector, private sector, the social sector, and civil society, and work through them. It's a tall uh, order, um, but we invite you to join us in that. Thank you.